Hey there, welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Yeah, that's right, I brought you to Toronto. I uh, came here to get some culture, some city life, see a great band called the Rio Statics, and bring you along on my first ever in-person studio visit. Uh, and this is with a very great printer, a uh, great friend of mine for many years, um, probably one of the better printers in the whole world, in Canada specifically. Uh, this is the great Bob Carney, and we're going to go in his gallery right now, and his uh, studio, and we're going to have a really good conversation with Bob, I know, because Bob is such a fantastic guy to talk to. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get on with it here. How are you doing? Hey Bill, how you doing? Good, thanks for having me here and thanks for yeah, taking thanks me for through your place. By. Oh man, it's always great to come here, I love it. Um, so, you know, uh, these studio visits are going to be an interesting thing because uh, I was doing them online for a while there during the pandemic where I was actually doing it via Zoom and it's much nicer to be able to come and work with somebody and see their work in person and I thought you would be a perfect first person to do this with because uh -huh. you've got such an incredible place here that you've set up um, and, uh, you know, we'll take people through through it as uh, as we're talking here um, so they can see some of the things that you do um, but first off why don't you uh, give me an idea of what's happening now here with uh, with I mean it used to be elevator you used to yep. be elevator a long time ago and now you've you've well, gone off start, on your own in two different galleries and yeah I yeah. started out at Silver Shack uh, 91 printing for others uh, I had a career before that working at major labs doing uh, color work but I decided in 91 to start on my own and I started doing black and white processing, contacting in Toronto and it was a very viable business to about 2000. And then the digital world started taking over and um, basically we lost 70% of our business. Yeah, in, I mean, it was it, amazing how many people we knew. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, it used to be like an industry like the auto industry. Yeah, and it was a good industry. It overnight it changed. And at that time I was still too young to quit and I was already had 20 years in but I was nowhere near ready to quit so I basically I I talked to one of my clients and that's part of my story I've always had really good friends and good benefactors and people that work with me and clients and I was li literally talking to one of my clients and I was bemoaning the fact that I you know the business was going down and he says well what do you need to do and I said well I need to study for two years and I need to study digital and so he says well I'll hire you and basically he gave me seventy five thousand dollars for two years like so a total of one hundred fifty thousand dollars and he says you just come and talk to me once a month and basically he bailed me out. He basically made it possible for me to downsize everything. I started taking digital courses with Dan Magoulis, uh, with uh, uh, Chris, uh, Katrina I remember Eastman you in New York. That. Yeah, yeah. I, I did a Dan Margulis course four times, and they weren't cheap and um, very tough. And then I went to New York with Katrina Eastman. I did a couple of Lightroom workshops with her. I did a, a Photoshop question and answer with her. Then I went down to um, Atlanta, and I took some basic Photoshop courses and basically evolved into, um, I, I started understanding digital. And I decided to mix digital with traditional because I wasn't prepared to give up silver printing. Right, yeah. And I was doing Cibachromes at the time. And so anyways, the long and short of it, we got into the industry. And um, I continued to print silver and uh, about eight years ago, I decided I didn't like the direction my company was going in. I, there was nothing wrong business-wise with the, where it was going. It's just I did not like working with high-end commercial type of jobs. Right. It was too much cardboard, too much 
volume, uh, and so I, I. And this was doing. You were doing what at that time? You were you were doing Starbucks. We were doing Starbucks. We were doing a uh, Nemes Hotel in for Four Seasons, and yeah, okay. all these big, big commercial projects. And so I basically retired from the company, and my part, my ex partner, continue on, and he's continuing on today. He's still doing it, right? right? And I started doing completely this little business, and. So we, we get here now, I, I'm now turning 70, and I still am, am as active as I was 30 years ago, and I still have this love for photography. So what I've decided to do, with the help of my, one of my best friends, we got this building. I, my wife and I live above, we're very secure. We have this main floor, which you'll see, and you'll see the basement. and. Basically, we work out of here, and I have two young women that are my assistants, and they're doing all the hard work. I make them do everything. Like they're doing the processing, the the, the printing, the wet, the chemicals. They're 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 doing everything, and I just come in and look and say, yeah, I like that. I don't like it, and yeah, and it's a good relationship, and we do a lot of custom framing. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's something that you've always done. I remember in yeah. all the years you've all, you, I've known you, you said always have always, a framing business. Always have framing because uh, it's. Uh, the end of the circle so I actually expose work in my own private work I develop it I print it I I yeah. frame it and yeah. I show it so yeah. I, I do gallery yeah, you've been it. a full in-house thing for a long time now yeah. and, um, I mean that's a really great way to be I've told people your theory of that a lot of times is yeah. like always have that because that was also something you had it, it's, carrying the business when other things weren't. yeah when things weren't working well like right. well, you know so just recently we've had a very slow period of digital inkjets yeah but we've had a complete surge of platinum of, palladium gums right. and gum more hybrid processes and more analog yeah. processes yeah. yeah so the the gallery is not per se a representation gallery right it's basically a, an exhibiting space yeah. I use. Yeah, yeah right? I use it to exhibit the yeah. work that you print and the work that you would like to work on. Yeah, and I don't have to print the work as I, sh you know, I'll show yeah. you. Sometimes I have guest uh, artists come in. Right. You'd be welcome anytime to put yeah. a show in here, right? Oh, and I remember back at Elevator, uh, Bob, uh, you helped me. We printed a show here. We big printed silver a prints, big silver prints, yeah. One of the finest shows I think I ever yeah. did. It's really a really nice, nice stuff. It was nice working with you because it was like working with my... A brother from another Mother. Yeah, my brother from another mother, <laughs> yeah. an identical twin that knew what I wanted before I knew yeah, I wanted that it. That was surprising. That and was that's what you are, that's yeah. that's the beauty of working with you though, you know, I mean that's the kind of symbiotic sort you, of relationship you have to have with an artist if you're going to work with them. To be a good printer you have to be a bit of a chameleon, you yeah. have to like learn to get into their skin a bit and understand what they like or dislike. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't do it and you, you end up not working with them after right. one or two shows right. or one or two print jobs and you just really realize there's no mix and you move on right well another thing i've always admired about you is the fact that you're always you're like a shark you're always moving ahead and you've always got new ideas coming yeah. and that's why i felt like a kindred spirit with you too is because you're always sort of inventing new things for yourself to be able to do and, and i like to keep myself busy yeah and when you run into hard times you know rather than just moping or moaning about it you figure out something else to do and, and yeah, another well, aspect of it you know? when covid hit we we i got I, 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 we lost a lot of business. All small businesses in North America went through the same oh, thing. Oh yeah, it was devastating. But I was, I just started printing and yeah. it turned out yeah. to be good. I printed my own work. But where we're located here, uh, I mean, four blocks down is one of Canada's best photo. Right, Stephen. Stephen Bolger, yeah. he's down there. It's an incredible gallery. And then we have another big gallery moving in down and around the corner we have MoCA yeah. and then we have all these galleries that are on uh, St. Clemens. And yeah. then, you know, we have a lot of galleries in this area. So what we're going to do is have prints for sale here. Commission, you know, so consignment prints. But the work on the wall, we don't represent. It's yeah. just these consignment Yeah, you don't want to get into representing artists. I don't want that. No, no not yeah, at all. I understand all. that not completely. At all. I mean, yeah. having been through that world, it's 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 not you know, that's all consuming and yeah no I, I mean, don't want to do that you know ask me uh, ask me let, me let me ask you this is like what I find out is that you know I do this and I like to do a lot of different things but I find out that I'm wearing too many hats and that I'm, I'm having a hard time functioning and getting in on any one thing like so with you you work with a lot of other people and you have for years so you're obviously a good manager you know as far as being able to manage mm -hmm. other people working I mean that's one thing that's hard for artists to do is to be able to 
to create and to have so many things going as you do without having other supportive people around. Right. You. Well, I, you've I mean, always had such a great. Career. I always, I always make sure that when I hire staff. Um, that they're solid. So I've never, you know, I've never had what I consider problems with my staff. Uh, I go backwards to the two young women that are working with me now, mm -hmm. Haley and, and Am. They're fantastic. Yeah. Before them, I had Carissa, who Carissa, you know, I remember Carissa. And she's and now flourishing. Camelia. Yeah. Paulette McKayla. Paulette worked was with a fantastic. Me. Yeah, worked retoucher. with me. And then so you just keep you keep people that are interested, and you know things don't always work out. I mean, it's like we all have our, our life to live, but I've always found that if, if you can get people around you, that's, you know, I mean, you see Wayne in the other room. Yeah, Wayne's working Wayne right now. Wayne was my assistant 25 years yeah, ago, and he's ago. still scanning his own projects in here and yeah. hangs out. Uh, I encourage that. You know, I don't want uh, all the public masses to come and see me right now. Yeah, and yeah well, I understand that, but you, you've, you fostered a family is what you've done. Yeah, I've, I, I, I try to build a community. It, yeah. Like and here it's going to be my resting place. You yeah. know, this is it. Yeah. So you know, um, I I like to know that I'll be able to continue working, and I'll know that the two young women and whoever they hire can keep the building going, yeah. and we're you know keep that all functioning. So my role is basically to look at it all and just say, okay, we're we're going in the direction that I think is correct. Yes. And. They do it, yeah. And not that they do it because I say so. They do it because they believe in what well, I'm well, showing. Well, it's such a them. valuable thing. I mean, you know, me coming up in Detroit, it was, it was hard to find somebody like you. You know what I mean? Somebody that, you know, I mean, this is such a valuable place. I would think for somebody young trying to work. Uh, I hope what so. We do. I hope. I mean, so. I'd love to have somebody like that working yeah. with me. I mean, I live more remotely, and it's it's more difficult to find people like that. But to be able to, to have that, somebody that you can trust and rely on is really great. Well, you'd be shocked. I get, well, you won't be shocked, but I get, no. and I'm sure you get these same phone calls or emails. Yeah. I get asked at least three times yeah. a month for every part of the world to come and intern with me. Yeah. And I don't do that because I I don't believe in free labor. So I, and I, I don't want to, muddy the water so yeah, I but I you. do everything is open it's an open book I'm a complete open book uh, yeah I understand that like I don't want to get somebody for free and you know no. I, mean, I, I was there's no kid. mileage in I that. was that kid working getting 50 bucks a yeah. week you know and it's hard to make it you know especially no. if somebody's gonna come no. to Toronto yeah. or for me up in the northern Michigan yeah. where they're gonna have to get a place to live and you know, yeah I mean, like try living in New York City right, you've got to be able to Chicago pay or Toronto right. London UK yeah. it's ridiculous yeah, I so, understand I understand so it's really tough. I understand. Well, um, you know, let's. Uh, why don't you show me some of the work you've got okay. here in front of you? This is some of the things that you've been doing over the years. Okay, so this is kind of like a historical back. So I'm going to go through different printing techniques. So this is a. Yeah. This is a photograph. Um, by Russell Monk. Uh, Russell lives in India now. Uh, not in India, sorry. And he lives in Mexico. And uh, I've been printing for Russell now for quite a few years. That's a beautiful print. And so this is uh, this is a show that was called Heaven and Hell. So this is an an an, an enlarger print. Okay. So it's it's uh, Ilford. Uh, it's a cold tone paper, and it's been bleached sepia tone. Sepia tone. Yeah. You know, yeah. What we did. What yeah. we do. You like the mat. I like you. You actually turn me on to matte paper versus the glossy yeah, I remember because I was, that was doing really all cool. matte uh, glossy and I had never and, split tone yeah. things that big before and then we incredible. did the split tones yeah. and I said wait a minute that's the secret so Mr. Schwab yeah. was responsible for me to move from <laughs> glossy paper well, thanks to matte for saying paper that. yeah I mean, so so what this is is a 35 mil. Yeah. In an, oh no, actually, sorry, two and a quarter. God. It the film uh, was shot in India. Um, we printed it, and it was part of a big show uh, that Russell did in the in the 90s. Yeah, in the God, 90s. it's a, it's so just that, a. It's a gorgeous print. So that's I, a, I think a beautiful print is something that I kind of want to chew on or eat. You know what I mean? They're just so yummy. It's a beautiful thing. That's, so that's a gorgeous print. Pre-digital. This, yeah. is, this is all analog. Yeah, nice. Okay, so then we move fast forward. The The image was taken in the 1950s Yeah. on a Hasselblad. Oh, yeah. But we had to get the all the film out of um, Conrad Grable. So this is a photograph by David Hunsberger, who I actually 
actually knew back in the seven, six, uh, 70s. And he was a, a Mennonite, uh, um, lived in um, St. Jacob's, Ontario, and he photographed all these Mennonite scenes. Yeah. And this is a inkjet negative, on, and it's a silver print. Really? So that's yeah. a full-size inkjet negative? That's a full-size inkjet negative, and it's been contact printed. You can tell by the black borders, right? So I, we do a lot of that. So that is, I'm going to have to print sniff that after we go off camera. I really want to look at so that. So I've been that, really interested in this. Yeah, so that is inkjet. Uh, so scan of the Hasselblad neg. Right. Then Photoshop work. Then an inkjet, an inkjet neg, neg, and neg. And then a contact, and then a contact on, and on the 1114 enlarger. Yeah. Wow. Okay, this one. So this series is, again, by Russell Monk. Uh, this won um, an award so with the um, um, New York Times. This is a Lambda print. Okay, so that's a silver print from It's a, a silver print directly from uh, a scan negative. Silver print on the Lambda, okay. and then it's C bleached sepia tone. So you bleached it afterward, you've done the... And tone. So that's the beauty of it, is you've taken this thing, you've been able to clean it up digitally, and then you've been able to put it back out on an analog sheet of paper once again yeah, and treat it like you would have done that. Silver, yeah. yeah. So everything is on the wet print. Everything's done in trays. There's yeah. no machines that are... We do everything by hand. Yeah. So um, this... You've now seen three ways of making the same kind of print. Same kind of print, right. A, a analog negative From in an enlarger, larger, right? a digital neg to contact, and a lambda silver gelatin print. So that's now we're into the 2009 era yeah. of, of my life. Yeah. And then um, for a while there, I got really de demotivated with silver because um, I was doing a lot of my own personal work doing tricolor quad tone printing right and I couldn't get the colors I wanted so I started moving into um, I started moving into um, gum bichromate platinum palladium I tried carbon I never really got that far with carbon because I didn't really like the process right and so anyways I started doing um, alternative printing and making negatives. So what we have here is the problem. I've never liked platinum prints, palladium by themselves. Right. I never thought the D Max was anywhere near what you could get. Right. With a lot silver. of people, especially somebody like you, who's been a silver printer all your life. Yeah, I was a really silver hard. printer. Yeah. So by moving into platinum was like. Well, I don't Where's want to. I don't want to imagine the black. Right. I want to see the black. Right. right? And that was that whole. Well, we just imagine the black. I mean, yeah. it's perceived black, and it's like, no, no, I want to see black. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So what I do now, so that's a plat. That's a platinum palladium base. Yeah. But there's a shadow neg made. Yeah. So we 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 basically we take the same file that makes the palladium neg. So we make an inkjet neg. So this is David Hunsberger. Again, from the yeah. 1950s. Yes. And we make the main plat platinum palladium negative, which you can see. Yep. But can you see the blue I can all see the way the blue around? in there as well, yeah. So the blue, what happens when you mix blue and yellow together? Yeah. It makes gray and black. Yep, yeah, yeah, and you get the nice. It's the complementary color. So, so that goes into your that shadow. That goes into the shadow only. So you make a second negative. So what you do is you go into blend if. So you 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 have your file open. You've made your palladium neg. So we you know this is for people that understand the quad you know how to make these. Yeah, nags. I understand. Yeah. So once you're at that stage to make your second negative, you make a layer. You unclick the background layer. You double click in the big bar, and the blend if guy uh, thing comes up. You take your slider, and then the image just shows your shadows only. You click, flatten, and invert it, and you've now got a shadow only negative. Only negative. So everything here is completely jet black. 
and the only thing that's showing is the is clear, clear. It, is just the so shadows. You, and you just register that second. So you register on, on the systems I'll show you downstairs with the... With the uh, now is your blue level done with a pigment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you so have any kind of like some people go into cyanotone for those things too. Is, no, no, yeah, no. I use I use yeah. I use a, 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 the Calvin Greer blue gray the blue or gray. the paint. So it, you don't get any staining with that because I notice no. with a lot of my blue my blue pigments I get some staining. No, I get no staining on Fantastic. that. Fantastic. And so then all of a sudden you get a not only a perceived black, you get a real black. A real black, in right? There. Right. Okay. And, and that mixture there, it's really interesting because you can really see that exposure scale, that long exposure scale in the background and in other areas of it. And it's nice. To it complements each it, other, right? So Very nicely. I mean, it doesn't look, it doesn't look altered in it. So, so I, Irving Penn was trying to do the ultimate yeah. palladium print. Multiple strikes. And, but yeah. he was, he was just burning them dark. Right. Whereas Edward Steichen learned how to do gum over. Right. So that image that just sold for 11.8 million yeah, the flat is iron a building. gum over palladium. Yeah. Oh yeah. The moon moonrise over lily pond. Yeah, the pond. It's a, gum, a gum over. It's a gum over, right? I know, and you know, and I had back when I was with Halstead uh, Gallery, and I would go. Uh, he had one of the he had one of the moonrise over a pond. It was just the palladium version. Of oh, it. just the palladium. And yeah. it was like you mentioned. It just didn't seem finished. It no. wasn't quite that. Image, so know. it's very subtle, right? Yeah, I mean, it's very but, but, subtle, but, but it's the but completing, it's, for, it's the yeah, icing on the cake. It's for a guy, it it's like a printmaker like yourself, and yeah. maybe some of the people that are viewing here that that have done a lot of silver gelatin printing and now are doing gum, I mean, sorry, platinum, platinum they're yeah. going to be a bit frustrated, but if you start putting right this, the yeah. other layer, you'll be and that's what it's been said a lot now is that once you've done that too, a palladium print just doesn't seem finished to you anymore. No, it never does. Yeah. I, like I, 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 in fact, if you go on my website, I will not sell a platinum palladium oh, yeah, print. You, yeah. you just can't buy one from it. Yeah, it, it just doesn't seem, I, I understand, I get it completely, you know, I, I, I get it completely, you know, I mean, I am much the same, I came from a silver printing background and moved into these things afterward, and I, I do have a nice taste for platinum and palladium printing, um, but I still like that. You you know, when I'm making my own prints and I have that option to just go a little punchier, yeah. I like that. I like that option. And not only does it do that, it gives it a more depth and it gives it some color and tone. And oh wow! So this is um, this is one of mine. That's very nice, Bob. Um, so I have to credit Christina Anderson. Yeah. On this, because Christina is the one that I read her books and. For everyone that's viewing, you should get her books. Oh yes, yeah. I it's always got, love Christina. It's got great stuff in it. So this is a single Matter of negative. fact, Christine, if you're listening, I want to come out to Montana and do yeah. this at your place as well. So there we go. Yeah. Anyway, good. There's a funny story about the first time I ever met Christina, but is we'll there? leave it. Hold on, yeah, we'll, we'll, leave I can't, I, we'll leave that. Yeah, you yeah, ask yeah. her. Um, <laughs> in Project Basho. Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah I taught back. there one time too. Yeah. Wow. So, anyways, this is a single neg, and what it is, it, and, and this is one of my favorite types of printing now. Yeah. Where it's gum, 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 no palladium, and so we take the single negative, and you lay the first layer down. Yeah. So I don't know what came first, but this could be about five layers, and you just keep on. This is print number five. I've already sold four of these. Wow. Yeah, I've, this is the last print on this. And a, a Bob's, wow, it's so beautiful. It, it just basically, you, you coat it, then you put your next layer on, and you brush out, which, and then you put your next layer on, and you brush out. Brush it out. And this is the one thing about white. White colors work beautifully in gum bichromate. They do. The best. I've never tried it. The best. Okay, so, so that's that, actual a white layer laid over there. That's not no, 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 no. I'm saying white object. Oh, white object. I objects. see. I see. I see. You, know, what you mean. I thought you were using a white. No, 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 no. I don't use any white pigment. Yeah. Uh, though I noticed that Diana Bloomfield just posted somewhere she was using white she's pigment using on whites. black paper. She's and very was, experimental. I mean, it was kind of weird. She's very good at uh, like that. So. I actually like th this style a lot, so for a lot of my solarization work, uh, I've got 
hundreds and hundreds of these images and it's what I keeps me so when COVID hit yeah all I did was start printing wow. this Christmas all I've got uh, I've got 50 hats to do and so I, ne I never take a downtime I, I want to be printing all the time well you know I mean it's one of those things that you just have to keep doing I mean it's a skill that you just can't jump in you and just out can't of. jump in and out no, right you've got to keep it going there's a zen so this oh, is that was a beautiful this is another one of mine so there's no platinum here now, so that's a straight gum. All that's the way a gum, 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 gum. Yeah. Now how many layers on that would you say? That's uh, that's six layers. So six the layers. The black, the cyan, the black, yellow, cyan, magenta, cyan, maybe green, and then some retouching that you saw yeah. yesterday that Anam was doing. Uh, so there's maybe some retouching. I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah. If you do the retouching well, it's the same. You just can't tell. You just can't tell. No, I know. Okay, and so then... Yeah, it's nice to see these in person because I saw some of them posted and it's they're beautiful, you know? I mean, you really, they're really beautiful prints. So, one of the things that I've always hated was teaching, like like with groups. And yeah. I know you're laughing now. No, right? I, yeah, I know. You know where you are. I'm I've been in... Yeah. yeah you, know, been. you know where I like... So, I'm, I'm not good in groups, okay? I've got a very... I've been accused of having a very uh, bad temper, and I've been accused of being in in uh, politically incorrect. It's nice to hear you say yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, but it's true. I, I just have no patience yeah. when it's bullshit. I understand, Bob. So what these, I have done these are now things that are known about you, and that's so, okay. And so we I, love you anyway. So I started. I started. Um, I stopped doing workshops about four years ago. I, yeah. I just finally just said. I had it. There's I a lot to it. A lot of, oh, a lot of I, I, yeah. It's a lot, a lot of to different it. personalities. And for those that do workshops, God bless you. I don't yeah. know how you do it, but anyways. Yeah, I love doing But it. what I do do is I do, and which has been extremely rewarding, is one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And yeah. so I interview each artist. I make sure that not only are they going to, they have a portfolio they want to make, right? but I also make sure that they're going to buy the equipment required to do the prints exactly. immediately. Yeah, yeah. So I've now done that with five people. So Christine Fitzgerald, who did all this all the work here. beautiful work behind us and other projects, she came from the wet plate world. And um, right, she lives in Ottawa. And she came in with me, and this is about three years ago, and we started working. And I found that her experience with wet plate made her really... It really added to it. I'm she sure reacted, yeah, she, she, she actually understood everything we were doing right, um, right from day one. And working uh, with the chemistry. And working like with the chemistry well. was not an issue for her. Right. So we did the one body of work, and then she came back in a couple times by herself, and... Basically, she went downstairs. I went with her for five minutes. She kicked me out and said, get back upstairs. <laughs> she was ready to go. She was ready to go. So then she eventually built her own studio in Ottawa, rented the space, took a five-year lease, nice. went to get, and now she produces what you see on the walls here. So she's like the perfect student. She's, she's the she's perfect. She's gone to it. Like many times in my workshops, people go home and they want to start building their dark room and they very rarely get they to They never it. get to the point, right? Yeah, yeah. So then it moves to a couple of other students and then a woman by the name of uh, Michelle Hoosman, who is in... Oh yeah, Michelle's work. In Ottawa. I mean, in Ottawa, in Vancouver. Yeah. And I met her through Curry at the Cord, uh, Cardinal Gallery, and basically... Um, oh, those are beautiful. Yeah, this is her printer proof that she gave me. Yeah. So she came in, and we did a whole series on... Hold that up so we can see it. There. We did a whole series on um, spoons. Okay. And she had great success. These look like mushrooms? Mushroom yeah, so like this... The, well, it's mass. So yeah. her work is on oh, the mass. mass. So That's right, the latest one. So then she came in, and this body of work, so she came in with me once, yeah. and, and it seems to be the, the way they come in with me once, they come in a second time, and the second time, instead of working the full time with them, they do all the work in the first time, and then in the second time, they do everything, and I just kind of just advise them. Yeah. And then the third time, so this is Michelle did all of this printing. She did a monster job. Now, I was here back uh, about a year ago yeah. when she was here printing, and I yeah. met her. Yeah, was it the mass? It, yeah, yeah, and we'll show some of yeah. the imagery of her, of her working. Yeah, so she was she, working on the mass at the she time. She worked like a maniac. And she, she was doing the coding at the time. You she were did everything. It. I, yeah. was, I was basically watching her. So anyways, 
but you can see the quality of this, the quality of the birds. I mean, but the reality yeah. is I want the people I teach to be able to walk and actually do it. Yeah. And now I'm, my last student was just this past week. His name's um, Brian McCormick. Okay. And wow. so this is a tricolor over gum and then a fourth layer, uh, uh, sorry, a fourth layer of color to deepen the black. To so the blacks out in there. So area. what we do is we, so we do the gum bichromates over top the palladium and then we make a decision, well, how can we fix it? And in this case, there was some bleed through and this is a jet black in the original. So what we decided was, well, let's uh, mix some blue magenta yeah. together, or uh, sorry, cyan magenta, and then that creates a blue. And then instead of using the cyan negative, we use the palladium negative. Okay, and you printed that on that so one. The, and we printed that, and, and then we basically used Christina's method of brushwork. So the only time on a tricolor that you get into brushwork is when you start doing the retouch. So we could just keep on layering and layering, but we brushed this all out, but right. left the pigment here. Yeah, I you see know? what you mean. So yeah. that's, that's... It's a nice way to work. I mean, I've done that with some of my stuff, more reductive things where you're pulling color out of areas yeah. where you don't want it, and it, it, it's quite effective. And I think, I think what you could do, I mean, you know, you could go into that blend if when I'm talking about the shadow negs, yeah. So there's a way in blend if to isolate colors. So you can just go into blend if blue, isolate only isolate there, and then you make a negative you make the, negative the blue only. Yeah. You, yeah. you want to highlight greens, then right. you go in and you uh, blend if green yeah. areas only, and you make a negative for only the green. So you could literally do this six, seven layers on top. I tend to like to see four or five layers and I'm finished. Yeah. You know? Yeah. God, I don't. I, I don't like to take it much further, but you know these three are 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 the you know these three artists come in, and all three of them now can print on their own, and they're all buying the equipment. Uh, Brian has rented the building right next door to me, and he's going to build a, the complete setup as well. So when I teach, this is the way I like teaching. That's the way you like it's to go extremely with expensive, but. Yeah. You know what? I spent the money in 2003 to go see Dan Margolis. Oh, yeah. You've, you know, we, we put in all our time. Put in our time. or Yeah, exactly. So, you put a lot of money into this. You put a lot of your time into it. Your time is very valuable. And, what I try to guarantee is at the end of a training session, they not only have eight to ten finished prints that are worthy of exhibition, but also I make them take notes. They go home at each night. I don't let them go home and... We don't drink, party, or any of that stuff like I used to. Yeah. <laughs> but they go home and they have to type out the date. So they're taking photographs all the way through. Right. So everybody that I've worked with has their own, their own set, set of, of notes. notes. Yeah. And then they send me the notes and I grade them on it. Oh, very good. And if they don't know what they're doing, I tell them. And so I think the best, the biggest question is when you're teaching is the question is why? Well, and that's a good way to do it as well as far as working one-on-one -on -one because, you know, you don't have the luxury of doing that in a workshop. No, There's you certain don't. people you know just because of personality-wise, they maybe not want to ask the questions and things. They're, they're, they get bullied you, by other workers. Other people, and you yeah. have to get, you have to kind of be able to figure those people out to give them the little bit of extra help that you need. And if they don't, they slip through the cracks. So yeah. I can see why in yeah. one-on-ones it is good. I mean, so, in all the one-on-ones I've done, it's very much like that where you can keep the running dialogue with people but and and and, and at the it end doesn't of the really day, make any sense unless they've got a printing box at home unless they're ready yeah. to go because yeah. i don't want to help them collect this stuff no it's not my job to yeah. then ha so i uh, before they even sign up with me i've got to make sure that they they know what they're going to what yeah. they need and i get it so some of them like come back so you know michelle comes back and uses my space because she's got a young family and she's not ready to put a right. full on alt dark room so she's right. willing to travel back to right and her Toronto. work is selling well and she's yeah. been and popular so, and so it's it's very and she loves it, it for her, right yeah. she yeah. loves this process i do I, I i think it's a great process yeah it's nice yeah. to have your studio available to people too because i've done <clears> this as well i've had people come in and they've you know, I kind of coach them through, or I'll have the materials there ready for them to go. But yeah. it has to be somebody that I know knows what. Yeah, I, I know. mean, for here we're like we're like we're we're actually quite busy all the time. So I found that 
I don't really want to rent out my space. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather do this busy. and then ensure that when they we go back to their hometown, gotcha. yeah. they've got all the gear. Bob, wow, this is all great stuff. Um, before I go here, I mean, we've been, we've been doing this a long time. I'd like to just ask you a couple questions, go back to the very beginning and, you know, I mean, I know where you started and stuff, but what made you want to do this? I mean, all of us have some specific passion that makes us want to do this. Otherwise, we wouldn't be continually doing it, right? So yeah. well, what is it that you brought you into this? Uh, I, I, I think that uh, for the, I, I'm, I found out that with printing, I'm actually pretty good at it. Um, I started out as a wedding portrait photographer, and I did not like the I did not like the photography part of what yeah. I do. So I concentrated very heavily on the printmaking side of it. So I worked at many really high end labs in Toronto. Now, for those that don't know Toronto, uh, it is one of the hotbeds in it the world is. for photo imaging. It is really has had had some of the best color labs. Oh, yeah. The best black and white labs and so I worked at a lot of the really good ones mm -hmm. and I learned from a lot of really top-end technicians I learned from Kodak techs Fuji techs they were all sent into the labs that I worked in to train us on specialty things like right. how to how to calibrate internet how yeah. to do the sensitometry to, to right. make internegs how yeah. to no, that was their job, and and back in the day we had these. It, like we said, it was an industry. It was an industry. I, you know, we we're very parallel in that because I started off at labs as yeah. well. I worked at a dye transfer lab called Kibby for yeah. a while, and you know was trained on making separation eggs. And before I walked in there, I didn't know what a separation egg was. Right, but the, but the, it gave me valuable to this day. It gave me valuable information that uh, you know. So I understand the positive and the negative is what yeah. I do. I've been looking at a negative inverting to a positive and or vice versa now for a long time for a long time so next year is my 50th year printing yeah. and um what i just want to continue doing is 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 printmaking i i love it uh, i'd like to teach a few of the young people around me yeah. and i'd also you know willing to do one-on-ones with people that really want to do it yeah i mean that turns into we do you know, some people are very adept at doing Photoshop, and others are not. Are not so much. Others don't want to buy an inkjet machine and do that. They so exactly. so. It's a good, con, con, even though I train them and they move away. Yeah. I still get business because they need me to do a few things for them, and right. I like that. Yeah. Well, it's just good, that, like you say, in a community. You know, and and you get a community like that, and things happen, and then students of yours go out, and good things happen to them, and it blows. It back all it all way. falls back. But yeah. I have to say that. We are, we are probably in the very best of times right now uh, where we are actually making prints. It feels like 1973 all over again. Yeah, you know, so do you remember was, yeah, yeah, going yeah, in and, and it was all the it's hippies making, in the dark rooms yeah. and the music was playing, everybody was creating images and we all thought we were Ansel Adams or yeah. we all thought we were we Carche Brasson, yeah. right? You know, family of man. And then we got more and more further in it and now with this kind of work with silver gelatin i can i can i can bring that vibe back yeah and you've got all those tools i mean that's the beauty of being a printer these days and learning all these different processes is that you can draw off of all different eras you, and, you go back and now backward what we're in seeing time. with the art world is that it's all mixing and mashing up yeah you know? i mean it's it's quite fascinating, you know. I think that we were talking the other day about how, like, the Ansel Adams thing. I mean, it's odd because I just came from there uh, doing a workshop out at the Ansel Adams Gallery. But, um, you know, that's what we looked at as the pinnacle of things at that time, never knowing that we were going to take it even farther beyond that. You well, know? And that's what's happened. It's like what I said to you, uh, you know, back before there was the Internet, it, the rumors were that you could go to... The town of yeah. Ansel Adams. Yeah, you could go knock, you could on, go his knock on his door and his wife would answer the door. Yeah. And if he was there, he well, would sit down and talk with you. And, and, and you know, and he, too, I think we kind of lost interests. that vibe. But, yeah. I th but I think that by yeah. the Internet, like, so I have so many beautiful friends all over the world on these Facebook groups. They're not, everybody knows who everybody is. Yeah, it's a very small, small niche. There's no avatars. Is. There's no h people hiding 
No, we know who you there's, are. Yeah, we know who you are, so there's no trolling. There's And we found that with APUG back yeah, in the early yeah, days, stopped, where you would get into arguments. Oh. But the thing was is that we shared a lot of knowledge that we weren't able to share before. Yeah. And even before then with the use groups and the, yeah. the things back where I first met, you know, well, we Karen met, we met, and met Christine and yeah. you and I mean, that's where this all began, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, began a 30-year relationship. That so we now had. we're on YouTube, you're doing, yeah, you're doing, doing what YouTube. you do in, in yeah. Photostock and in Michigan. And, yeah, and I, just try I, to spread the word and the build community. I, I like the community idea. Yeah, now, I'm, I'm in a small little community. Yeah. I call it, the I'm the king of Rockton Village. Yeah. I yeah, like but you, 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 go, you go much farther beyond that, though, <laughs> you know, you go much farther beyond that. Well, listen, Bob, uh, very last question, like who probably of your printers, that you, people whose work that you like uh, from all time probably influenced you? Like who, who did you... Who I printed at? for? No, or, not that you printed for, who, somebody that made you want to really do it. Like Okay, what? Um, well, the book I, I, I think influenced me a lot was Family of Man, Yeah, that, that yeah, whole lot, yep. body of work. And then I'd have to say my influence is Brassai. I yeah. love Brassai, yeah. obviously. I mean, yeah, yeah, because uh, see the book right here. I have here. the book right there, right? I yeah. love Brassai, and I love Man Ray. Yeah. So I guess I'm a bit of that. That era. That era. era. Yeah. Kurtaj, um, I, I I liked a lot of um, Avedon's work, which is in the American West. Yeah, I, the I West love that. That was a great one. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I I may get booted out but the best prints i ever saw in my life was joel peter whitkin's prints uh if you've ever seen yeah one of his prints uh no matter the subject matter they're probably the most in incredible prints, prints you'll ever yeah. see in it's your life they're quite they're quite nice you know so yeah. um i'm not i'm not though i love ansel adams oh yeah persona I'd well, rather have my brain shot out if I had to go in a room and look at all those prints. It's yeah, just not my thing. It's right? just the way it goes with certain people, you know, and, and I, I understand that. And it's, it's happened with all of us, you know, like that's what I aspired to at one point. But then I started to learn about Brassai and I started to yeah. learn about all these other people and see different visions and different people's yeah, you look ideas at of things. And, and it's not that that work uh, becomes boring to me at all or like that, but it, it, it just, it has its place and its position yeah. in the history of everything. And it's not I think if you looked at Lillian for. Bassman, probably oh, yeah. one of the most incredible photographers. Yeah. Uh, and like Sarah Moon, she, yeah. we, we, um, we work a lot and I force, I find that by pushing them, the young women to, to, to print, I'm, I've made them buy, uh, you know, the outfits I used to wear. Yeah. So yeah. I made them both buy. Orange uh, jumpsuits like you used no, to wear? No, we don't have the orange jumpsuits. <laughs> I think I have a picture of that. Yeah, you do have, up. but we, we, we have, we have the overalls. Yeah. So we all have yeah. our overalls yeah, so that we wear in the dark room. Everybody's protected. And so I just say, okay, uh, I'll send an email off at the end of the day and I'll say okay tomorrow you're in overalls tomorrow you're on the on the the you're doing digital so, so you know what's happening yeah we know, know we know two or three days what a event. valuable thing I mean if I was you know this would be the kind of place where if I was a young aspiring artist I'd, I'd be coming here I today. sure the hell wish I met Bob Carney yeah, 35 yeah, yeah, years yeah, ago yeah, right yeah, yeah. You I know, know you know well I think, think I did I've met a lot of really other. good old 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 photographers and people that I've worked with that yeah. were really good yeah yeah well Bob I can't thank you enough for this. It's okay, really great Bill. that you've done this. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll do the old fist bump across <laughs> the table. And, uh, you know, thanks for being the first. You know, okay. It's really great. I'm okay. glad that you did this. So, hey, we're going to take a nice little tour of Bob's shop here. And uh, he's going to show us around and show us around the works here. And uh, let's go. Okay. So we're in the small little exhibition space. I've, I, I've built this so that I can show people's artwork that I like. Uh, also, we, we, we sell small prints and we're going to be selling, doing more of this with more of these bins next year. The idea is not, we're not a representation gallery, even though you can obviously see there's red dots. Uh, we don't really sell the work. Uh, our clients who have this work on the wall will sell it themselves. So we don't charge any fees to be on our walls. It's more, I pick the artists and I hang the work. Okay. And if it sells, um, they get the money. So. Uh, it's basically a showroom. It's basically a working room. And these are mostly artists that you've printed here. No, not no, always. No, no, no. We've we've had uh, like we had Diana Bloomfield up here. We've had uh, Alexander um, um, Pre Pre Premack from Kiev. We put all his work up recently. Nice. Uh, we we pick. I pick work that I can live with. 
I see. So, because I'm here every single day, so I want to be able to come in and look at work and say, I like it. Right, so, right. so I have no, we don't rent the gallery, we don't uh, charge them to be on here, and in most cases we'll supply framing if, if okay. but it's a place for us to, for, it shows off what, what's potentially what we can do. What you do for people, yeah. Yeah, and so here we're starting to go into the uh, framing area. And this is silver gelatin in larger prints that you're seeing, other than this one. This is a, this is a, a Agfa Classic Lambda fiber base print, printed in 2003 so for Russell Monk. So it's printed in the Lambda. Printed on a Lambda. It was one of the first murals ever done. So uh, Ilford introduced Lambda paper in 2006. We were doing it on um, Agfa Classic in 2002, 2000. Wow. right? This is Ilford Warm Tone, four by five in, uh, negative uh, in larger prints. So I do in larger prints, Lambda prints. This is an inkjet print. Beautiful work. Up here, I've, I, in my past, I did a lot of work with musicians. Uh, f the, not musicians, but photographers that work with musicians. So prints is with my right. um, Margaret Malandrucola. Demo Safari with the uh, Rolling Stones. Keith the, Richards, yeah. yeah. David Bowie. David Bowie with Frank Oakenfels the third. Um, then we have Jimmy Page. That was Nigel Dixon. That was from the jam session of Whole Lot of Love. That was from the recording, Barnes Noble. Wow. And this is by Jerry Dieter, uh, who was a life photographer. And this is the, the actual bed in. bed in. Yeah, wow. And then this is a uh, classic Canadian yeah. band, The Tragically Hip, Hip and uh, that was by Richard Bland. Fantastic. So I, a lot of my career was doing that kind of work. And then we moved into Lambda Fibers. Uh, this was a show at the ROM up here in Canada with the Vanity Fair show wow. uh, by Nigel Dixon. Yeah. Then we do Contemporary Large Ink Jets. That's uh, Rita Leitzner. Uh, a tree planting series that was showing at the Stephen Bolger Bolger Gallery. Gallery. Yeah, yeah, and then some of my own work. And in here we do framing. So we have a f mat cutter framer. We we um, we frame everything thirty by forty and under. Yeah. We were very custom shop that way. And back over here we have. Um, our Epson P7000 to do digital negatives, two iMac workstations that control all of that, Creo EverSmart scanner, flatbed, and an Imacon now. We are moving into cultural heritage with phase one system within the next six months, or within the next three months actually, and that will be uh, a big investment for us to start marketing and working with a group out of Hamilton that are coming here with us. and. We will then be working on archives that complement our services downstairs. downstairs. Wow! Right, so uh, we go back back here, and um, this is just a small mounting room. So I have a hot hot press. So in Toronto, the rent is really expensive anywhere in the city, and space is always primo. So we try to double up everything. So. Here we have a hot press for flattening fiber-based prints. We have a tabletop that lifts up when we want to do that. Um, storage up above for shows and frames. And what you're seeing there is, um, that's a Vivian Mayer print I printed. And these are the printing notes for the Vivian Mayer show that I did with Stephen Bulger. But everything that you see on the walls I own as either a printer proof or I made it myself for myself. Um, so as a printmaker, I've always demanded to get a signed copy. So when you came in yesterday right. and gave me that print, what was print. the first thing I did? You had me sign it. I yeah. made you sign it, right? And so <laughs> we specialize in custom framing, handmade spline joints. I mean, it's done all over the world, but we this is a, our preferred way of framing with a, really nice materials we also work with inkjet like i said and this is my wife's work you're getting ready for the next show in the gallery so my that wife was some of what was being spotted yeah that was yeah, what was yeah. being spotted right, and retouched right. by an m yeah. right so 
And that was all tricolor gum bichromates, right? This is great, Bob. I love it. So we have, you know, mat cutter, glass cutter. We eventually will open up this space because we're gonna go into a, 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 a collaboration with a company that does really big mounting and framing and they have a big space to be able to do it. Right. And we will just do small um, custom printing that is in tune with their printers and we can work with them. Right, everything's and, calibrated. And they do the, yeah, they do the output. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's the main floor. My wife and I, we live upstairs. Yeah. Um, and um, it has its challenges on the, you know, the steep stairwells and stuff, but we'll, we'll get over that. Okay, so we're gonna walk downstairs into the dark room. Sounds great. Where the magic happens. This is where it happens. <clears throat> so this first room is where we we coat paper and we bring it here to dry or we hang it to dry. So this is usually dark. Um, this is a Jobo process. We're in the middle of doing a very large run of 810 film that came in from, uh, the film was shot in Tibet, but it's being, it's uh, by a photographer in London, England. So he hand delivers his film to us and we process, wow. right? Yeah. And it's all custom PMK, Pyro, Gordon Hutchings formula. I've been doing this now since 1994. And though we don't promote the fact that we process film, we do have clients that only want us to do it. So yeah. here's a uh, film loaded, ready to go on the Jobo, right? Yeah. So here we have our sink area. So these are two 12 foot sinks and up above our screens, multi-purpose in, in my works, everything has to have a dual purpose. Here we have my solarization gotcha. device, right? So right. I do a lot of print solarization for my own personal work. We use Thompson safe lights like you see, but drying trays up here, Big handmade sinks. Once again, real good use of your space. Yeah, and then down below all the wet stuff. Yeah. All the big trays, like we can do really big prints. And then, so that's- I think that's, I remember you doing some of my prints. That's, we, we actually yeah. use those trays. So this side is the wet side. I only use a hot and cold, simple system and a big hose. This is a 30 foot hose and it goes up and All down. All the way the whole thing. Yeah, we don't plumb the whole thing. Two drains, one there, one there, right. out. And that hose is how we control it. On this side is the dry side. So we have client work. So, you know, I'll show you this. So this is a job that we, I taught a one-on-one -on -one course this past week and we made 12. 20 by 24 inch prints. And so here are the, the negatives that make that. So that is our palladium neg. So a gum over palladium, there's our palladium neg. Yeah. Then we hand strip on this big table here, the- um, Your uh, registration. Registration, so there's the cyan negative, all done by eye. Now I'm turning 70 now, so I don't do this stripping work, I can't. The lambda is here. Uh, this is uh, for paper, direct paper. We are just kicking it back up. COVID kind of kicked us real yeah. hard. Oh yeah, Everybody. But now we're, we're going back. Uh, we have, we moved to uh, John Cone oh, in yeah. Vermont you sells. His. I bought his wow, unit. Oh, you got the big one. This is a big one. So what we did is we modified the old old um, 3040 unit yeah and we put john's head on so john made this custom we gave him the exact measurement so he him and uh, i think it's walker walker yeah, makes, yeah they they designed this to fit precision on here and then they supplied these bolts and all we did was go zing zing in all the way around put on the back and this is led technology and yeah, these are great. I was working with one, Clay Harmon built one. Yeah. We were using it out uh, in Yosemite last week. Yeah, well, I, I was doing 30 by 40 film 
and prints, and it was taking me 20 minutes per exposure. Yeah, what are you now? One minute and 35. Wow. Se- one minute, 35 seconds. Now you've got a really tight array they built there. Oh yeah, this is this every... is shit hot. This yeah. is really like they really built it well. Yeah. I don't think very many people want to buy this because this was 11 and a half thousand Canadian. Yeah. But it paid for itself in the first three jobs because. It just sped up production for us. Exactly. So like when I work on gum, when I work on gum bichromate or platinum, I don't work one print at a time. I work 10 prints at a time. Yeah. So we build up the work, make all the film, and then we uh, we, we build all the film, and then we um, do it all at once. So yeah. we can do about, this past week we were doing 12 20, 24 prints a day. But that meant after four days, we had 12 done. Wow. So it's kind of, well, production line. Oh, it's it's pigeon time. Oh, it's pigeon time. No, bird time. They came down and attacked me when I came out. Okay, here they come. (laughs) Here they come. Oh, my God. There they go. <laughs> I said I was 70. I'm getting senile. Yeah, you're getting senile. I'm getting much. I'm getting muddy. You and your pigeons. I love. Th- oh, they're great. I don't think the neighbors like me too much. So this. that's why they attacked me when I came yeah. out here. Yeah. I figured they knew somebody. The little guys. The little guys will come, and I throw some over here. Wow. So the, the sparrows will get the little ones, because these guys are gluttons. Yeah, they are. They are. They are gluttons. They wait for me every morning. It's Bobby's birds. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh man. So this is our backyard. It's a good life, Bob. And we normally have a tent out here. In the summertime, we barbecue lunch nice. or, or like cook lunch on the cookers, and you know, it's 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 a, a it's a nice place. And up above. So My wife and I lines. live up on the third floor. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And you got a balcony up there? It's nice. Laura throws down water at me and throws <laughs> stuff. Right? I bet you that's not all she throws yeah. at you. I have to see Laura, too. So, that was great. That went even better than I thought it was going to go. Um, Bob's such a great guy. He's very giving and, uh, you know, kind of community guy you want. Um, so yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this, and uh, if you did, give us a thumbs up. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these, and uh, that's one of my plans over the next year or so is to travel to different artists' studios and to visit with them, just like I did with Bob, and talk about their style and talk about their work and talk about what motivates them. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep at it. Again, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Please tell a friend, and uh, we're going to do this a lot more. Yeah, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.